Hi, I'm Captain John Kaiser. In today's video, we're going to learn how to run hoochies, otherwise known as squids, behind flashers. Talk about how to rig them up, how to make sure they work properly in the water, how to put scent on them, all those good things. So I'm kind of excited. It's one of my favorite ways to fish. Let's go ahead and head out in the water here and we'll get some stuff and we'll show you how to rig them up and see what they look like. Okay, we're going to talk about tying up squids and flies today. Basically, this is an ace high fly. Here's a standard hoochie, green spatter back. There's a twinkle skirt that goes inside it. A couple of uh, five aught, actually these are six aught mustad hooks. Some beads that we're going to use to incorporate tying these. And basically they're tied the same way, so I'm going to show you one and you can do the other one. The only difference would be when you're tying the ace high fly against the squid, you don't need to insert in it because it's already got a hard head on it. So but basically what this does is, is make this head hard because this is soft, otherwise it would deform when you're towing it in the water. But we'll go ahead and build one up here, and I'll show you how to do it. First thing I'm going to do is start with my hooks here. I'm going to take and uh, debarb these, because we have to have debarbed hooks here when you're fishing salt water up here in the Pacific Northwest. All right, then I'm going to go ahead and attach my first hook here. I'm going to do just a simple uh, steel header call to an egg loop knot. I like it for doing this kind of stuff too. I'm going to insert the line through the hook, I. I'm going to pinch it off with my finger here, and I'm going to go ahead and do five wraps right next to each other. Three, four, five. I'm going to keep tension on this piece right here, and I'm going to come back to the other end of the line. I've got about 45 inches of leader here, and I'm going to insert the other end of the line through. Then I'm going to do is lay it down alongside the hook with the other piece. Now I have the tail end right here, and I'm back to my winding in. I'm going to give it three more wraps. Two, three. Important part right here is to keep tension on this. I'm going to keep tension on this line right here, and then I'm going to just go ahead and pull this line through. As I pull this through, it will cinch up. Last thing I will do, put a little saliva on there, just to wet the knot a little bit, and I'll pull that in, and that will tighten up tight. Then all I have to do is come in here and trim this little piece off. About right there. And I'm done with my first hook. And that's, if I was going to, that's why they call it an egg loop. In this case, I just like the way the hooks lay when you tie them that way. They seem to work real well inside the squid. Now, something I didn't mention is this is 50 pound leader material right here. And the reason I'm using this is this squid and that fly have no action in the water. In other words, if I put this behind the boat and towed it just by itself, it's not going to do anything except just pull straight in the water. And that's not going to work for salmon fishing. So in order to make it work correctly, we go to a heavier leader material. Now, by using this 50-pound test, every time the flasher rotates, it's going to move that back and forth, and we'll see it in the water in a little bit, and you can see how it works. Now, building these up, next thing I do is I'll come back up here. I'm going to want to add some beads. So I usually choose throw a little bead in the back here. I'll go ahead and insert one small bead on here. This is just a green one. You can use whatever you want. I like to put it on there because that hook bouncing around back there with that glow bead on it gives it a little bit of color. So you'll see now I have a hook attached with one glow bead. Next thing I'm going to do is attach my second hook. So I'm going to do follow the same process. I'm going to come through with the same line from the back side to the front side of the eye of the hook and just go ahead and scoot that whole setup down and get it laid down here. And I'm going to kind of measure about where I'm going to want it. I'm also going to invert them because I want the hooks in opposite directions. So I'm looking at with the beads in there, that's a good estimate, it's going to be about that far apart. So I go ahead and size that right. I got my hooks in opposite directions, gives a better bite radius depending on which way the fish goes instead of having them both in one direction. Roll this one over a little bit. And then all I'll do is come up here to this hook and I'll grab that line again that I had before. Same place. And I'll go ahead and give it five wraps three, four, five. So I have five wraps behind the eye. I'm going to lay that line down and pinch it with my other finger again so it can't come loose. I'm going to go to the end of the line, take the end of it again, insert it through the eye of the hook, about an inch, inch and a half, two inches, whatever, just to get enough to get it sticking out there. You don't want to pull it through too far, otherwise it comes problems when you're trying to wind it on. So get about right here and then just lay that setup down alongside the other one, pinch it both off again. So now I'll go back to my original line that I was winding with and I'll give it three more wraps. All in order, so they're nice laid out there. 
then I'll pinch it off. I'll come back through here and I'll pull that line through again just like I did on the last one. In this case I got it over my hand. I just got to move it up a little bit so it lays down correctly. Bring it up through here. A little saliva at the end. Pull that knot tight and I just finished my leader. So I have two hooks 40, 90 degrees out. So one's facing one way, one's facing the other way. Then it's just a simple matter of go ahead and, and finish building up my squid. In order to make that happen, I'm going to go ahead and add some more beads for spacers. You'll see here in a second. So I have a couple more glow beads, a little bit bigger. Come up to the end of my line, insert my glow beads. Bring those down. Now I have my glow beads on there. Now I'm ready to go. Now the next thing, we're gonna, if I was going to fish this ace high fly, I would just go ahead and slide it on right there and it's ready to go. I'm done. Completed unit. Now when you're fishing a standard squid, the squid, like we were talking about, has no head in it. There's nothing there for anything solid to give it any support in the water. It would just collapse. So we have to add a twinkle skirt with a solid head that inserts inside it. Also this mylar material like this is some of the best stuff. It reflects light really well. It does real well. So the next thing I'm going to do when I'm building this squid, on the standard squid, just go ahead and insert this down the line. So put your twinkle skirt on. Slide it down. There's my twinkle skirt on top of my hooks. And last but not least, I'm going to take my standard spatterback green hoochie. I'm going to go ahead, roll it over here, find the hole, insert the line in it, slide it down. Go ahead and get your legs undone. And then just slide that up, pull it up inside there so that head's up inside here. Now this is nice and firm, it can't bend over. My hooks are attached. If I look at it again, that's a perfect setup right here. If you tighten that together, here's a hook right here and I have this back hook sitting right behind it. They're both facing different directions. That's a standard hoochie. Now as far as links, it'll depend on whether you're fishing winter blackmouth, you like to fish them a little bit faster. You might go down to uh, 37, 36 inches. For summer kings, I might run a little farther. You know, I might go to 42 to 45 inches, have a little farther back so it's a little slower in the water. Okay, and the last thing I would do to these setups, this one here, I would take some smelly jelly. I'd go ahead and give this whole thing a good lateral coating of smelly jelly. Can't hurt it, get plenty of it on there. This is rubber material. And I'll go ahead and tie that to my flasher, and away I go. I'm ready to start fishing it. On this one here, on the Ace High Fly, you don't want to put it in here because you can see how poofy this fly is and that UV material flashes and stuff, that's kind of a, a neat effect. So if I put smelly jelly on that, it's going to cause that to lay down. So just put some on the head. Put it up here on the head and on, on the eyes and around the nose, and that's plenty. It'll give it plenty of scent. So here we go. We have our completed fly. I mean, it, and we have our completed hoochie right here with hooks in it, 50-pound liter material. We're going to tie that to our flasher now. Okay, I hope that video on uh, rigging flashers and stuff helped everybody out with the hoochies. I think that's a good way to fish. It's, it's a typical Northwest standard tackle. I mean, that is what we call salmon fishing 101 when we use those hoochies. So if you guys, if you pick up a good selection of different colors, different size hoochies, the minis, the standard, the magnums, you can pretty much go anywhere in the Northwest and catch salmon on that setup. I'm Captain John Kaiser, and I'll look forward to seeing you out on the water.